Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that welcome. And, uh, you know, we've, we've known of uh, Clint and Amy for a long time. Uh, they were a part of our staff before coming here. Uh, Logan, I got a chance to do presbytery over him uh, just before, I guess, maybe shortly before you left. And uh, they're just really special to us. And we're looking forward to deepening that relationship as well. Well, <clears throat> few, um, let, me, let me just make sure. Uh, Pastor Clint mentioned uh, my wife, but uh, honey, would you stand up? This is my, my girlfriend and my wife of 50 years. Last June, we celebrated 50 years, and these are two of our four children that are with us today. We have two boys and two girls. Um, they're the oldest two of the, the group, and um, we, we have 15 grandchildren. So they, they've been, we've been a fertile bunch uh, as well. <laughs> Recently, we went to see a movie uh, called Jesus Revolution. Has anybody seen that movie? It's so, so good. If you haven't, I really would recommend that you go see it. But it stirred up some things in me because I got saved in 1968. I got saved in the Jesus Revolution. And I, I, got, I understood so much by experience what was taking place. And what I believe is God is getting ready to do something similar to that in this generation. There's going to be a new Jesus Revolution in a new generation. And what we're doing today is preparing for that work. We're stirring up some of the gifts that God has and intends to use a sensitivity to his Holy Spirit. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to start, just read one passage in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, and then I'm going to add passages to it as we go along. But 1 Corinthians 12, 1 says, Paul's writing to the Corinthian church, and he says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't know where you are today, but maybe you've heard varying teachings, varying, you have an, very, varying opinions about what spiritual gifts are all about. I, when I got saved, I was part of a church that believed in the gifts of the Spirit and baptism of the Holy Spirit, and their official doctrine was something they, they referred to as seek not, forbid not. And so the way it worked is uh, if you just open up your life to God, you, you, don't, you, you don't sort of demand what the Holy Spirit is going to do. You seek, you seek God, uh, but you don't seek the gifts, but you don't for, forbid the gifts. Well, guess what? The gifts never operated. Because if you, if you open yourself up to God, but you don't activate what God does in you by faith, it'll never happen. I can tell you from a, a prophetic experience, you know, sometimes people say, oh, you're a prophet. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, you know, I'm, I don't want to be around you. Well, let me tell you, God reveals what he wants to reveal at a time he wants to reveal it. And if I don't ask, I don't get. And so the, it, this, this is such an important teaching. The Holy Spirit was given to us for God's work in our life. And God still speaks today. He, he speaks in our lives. He speaks about circumstances of our lives. And I, I'll say this, one word from God can change everything in your life. We believe in the word, so there's no extra biblical revelation to prophetic ministry. It all has to align with the scriptures and the, the character and nature of God. But how many know that if you're, you're thinking about taking a new job or buying a car or buying a house or marrying a person, you can't find a chapter and verse that says, do this. You can't. So what we need is the sensitivity of the Holy Spirit to guide us into the things that he wants us to do. And, and so, uh, when, we come to, when it comes to prophetic ministry in particular, prophetic ministry is something that is available to all. So, lest you think that we're here as something special, let me tell you, all the gifts that are identified later in chapter 12 are available to every believer. They, they're like 
golf clubs in your golf bag if you're a golfer. You, you have different clubs based on the, the need that's presented by a shot that you're about to take, and, and you pull the, the iron or the driver or the fairway wood, whatever it is that is needed in order to meet that situation. God has given us gifts so that we can minister to people, and those gifts are grace-given, and then if you begin to practice enough, then you have a ministry in a particular gift, but God opens his gifts up to everybody. So here's what I want you to know. I've titled this message, I Like Presbytery. As, as a pastor, one of the, the best weekends of the year at our church is Presbytery Weekend. Today, as we, we come under the authority of this house, we're here in submission uh, to Pastor Clint, to your leadership here. We, we, are, uh, we understand that uh, we can miss it. As, as much as we love God and press into Him, we can misunderstand or misinterpret or that we can be a- out of rhythm. And so we are submitted and committed to under the leadership of this house. We're not free agents. Maybe some of you have experienced prophetic ministry and the attitude of the prophet was, I have to give what God says regardless of what you say. It's it's. It's developed after an Old Testament model when the Old Testament prophets would come into the community and expose sin and call people out of their unrighteousness into into God's presence. And the Bible says that actually that ended with uh, John the uh, the baptizer, that he was the last prophet of that kind. And the reason I believe that it was is because uh, the the Holy Spirit was given when Jesus died on the cross. And the Holy Spirit's function is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, or right standing with God, and the judgment that's to come. What what the whole Old Testament prophets did, the Holy Spirit does in our life today, so we don't need someone to point out sin, to to draw people, uh, or maybe in an embarrassing way, to expose something in their life where they miss God or disobeyed God. Uh, and what goes on, 1 Corinthians 14, it says that actually prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 3, uh, it says, pro- or, I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but even more, verse 5, that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who prophesies in tongues. And he, for he speaks, he, he who speaks with tongues, uh, unless indeed the, he interprets uh, what has taken place so all can understand. Uh, verse 3 there says that prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So here's a little bit of my story. Because I got saved in this church that believed in the gifts, the, the pastor had a prophetic gift. And every person that was received into the church, he would uh, prophesy over them. Well, I just knew, although his expression of prophecy was much like I'm describing it uh, to you this morning, it was encouraging and comforting, but I knew when it came to me, he was going to expose something of my deep, deepest, darkest secrets, and uh, f- so for two years I didn't join the church, because <laughs> I was afraid what was going to happen. I was going to get embarrassed, or I was going to get called out in front of everyone. So finally I decided, you know, it is what it is. I want to be a part of the church. I want to serve in the church. And so I went through the class, and then the, the morning came for me to be received into the, con- into the congregation as a member. And there was about 15 or maybe 20 of us, and the pastor would start his prophetic uh, expression uh, like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And the Lord would say unto you, and then he would give a prophetic word. So two or three people in front of me, and they got great prophetic words. You know, it was all all according to 1 Corinthians 14, edification, exhortation, and comfort, just sweet words over them. And when he got to me, he looks, looks at me deep in, you know, deep in my, like he's staring deep all the way down to my toes. 
And he started out, he says, uh, Tom, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. And he just stared at me. And I thought, oh dear God, he's going deep. What, what's, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? And he says, the Lord gives me nothing for you, Tom. <laughs> what? I waited two years to get nothing? I thought, what? Every, every person that morning got a prophetic word except for me. That afternoon I was, I was home and he called uh, my house and he said, Tom, I just don't know how to explain what happened today. That's never happened to me. And, and just like that, this little impression came into my heart. Uh, if you don't want me to speak to you, I won't. And I said, oh, pastor, I I know what the deal is. And he said, what's that? And I said, I was afraid. And I didn't want to get a prophetic word. And and, uh, God just told me that if I don't want him to speak to me, he won't. And he said, oh, I I could not figure it out. Oh, man, okay. Well, well, so now you're open uh, to receiving uh, what God has. And I said, yeah, I repent, I'm sorry. For, for what took place. Well, if you're like me uh, back then, I just didn't know, I couldn't receive something that I couldn't explain. The Spirit of God works in unbelievable ways to, to reveal things in our lives. So here's some things I just wanna say to you. One, presbytery is about team ministry. The reason there's three of us here is because we believe in team. We believe that God speaks in team. In team. In fact, you, if you remember in the, the uh, account of Luke, chapter 10, the, the Lord identified 72 of his disciples and he sent them out in groups of two. I believe the Lord likes team ministry. He likes us to be yoked together and to be the partner together. I, it's a, a three, three strand cord is not easily broken, Ecclesiastes said, says. So, God puts us in a team. One of the things that a team does is we know each other. I mean, we know each other because we're family, but if it wasn't, if we were not all family members, we, we find that because we do this in a team and we know each other, we can say, hey, you missed it on that one. Hey, you, you took too long. Hey, you, you didn't quite express your... We, we're accountable to each other as the team, not only to the leadership of the, of the house. There's no rogue agents, in other words, because we do this as a team. And that's really important uh, for you to know. We've, we've experienced in our pastoral ministry uh, prophetic people that have blown into the church, they've blown up in the church, and then they've blown out of the city and left us to clean up all the mess. And we say, no, no, we don't, we don't want that. We're, we, we believe in teams. So we know each other. We believe that this ministry is for personal edification. It's not for our own credit. It's not for us to be puffed up before you to say, uh, we're, because we're really uh, good, we, we get to do this. God will anoint every person who yields to his work and his spirit uh, to do this. And let me just say this if you're a parent. Some of the greatest things that have uh, been a part of my relationship with God and believing that he speaks is have been for me as a parent when I have a troubled child or not even a troubled child but something that I'm disturbed about with my child I'm, I'm pressing into God and I get a word from God that I can deliver to them that brings comfort that brings clarity that that confirms something that's taken place it's really a powerful thing the second thing is presbytery is about impartation, not about correction. So Pastor Clint already mentioned uh, 1 Timothy 4.14 uh, where Paul said, don't neglect the spiritual gift that was given to you. Part of what prophetic ministry does is it identifies something. It confirms something in your life. It, it establishes or, or confirms a direction. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I... Sometimes the way that I feel is I discount. Somebody will tell me, you know, you really, you, you have a gift in this. We really need you to do this. And I'm thinking, no, I can't do that. 
No, I'm not good at that. And when, when God speaks from somebody who doesn't know me, so all of the candidates for this weekend, all we know is couple number one, couple number two. We don't know anything about them. We don't know their names. We, we do, we got the names in the green room before we came out today for this couple this morning. But prior to that, we had no name. We were just praying for God to give revelation uh, to what takes place. And in that revelation, God speaks. What we pray is, God, will you enable us to see with your eyes what you see? Do you know that God sees more about your life than you or I see ourselves? There's plans that God has for you. You, you. you might receive a word today and you go, I don't know anything about that. I, I, don't, I don't get it. God will help you. <clears throat> I, I went to do a, a prophetic ministry at a church and um, in words and season, I went and called the lady and asked her to stand up. I went to this lady and said, would you stand up? What's your name? We asked the name so that we can make it easy for it to find on the tape. And I said, I saw the word promotion over your life. Uh, I believe that, that God, a promotion is coming and God is going to promote you. I believe it's going to be fairly soon. And, you know, the whole place, you know, yeah, promotion, yeah, we, we, we love it. Well, um, the next year I was back and this lady comes up to me and I, I sort of recognized her. I couldn't remember her name. She had a hand on her hip like this, you know. <laughs> so she said, remember me? Whenever that happens, remember me, it's not a good thing. <laughs> remember me? And I said, yeah, I, I kind of do recognize you. And she said, yeah, you gave me a word last year. You told me promotion was coming. I said, well, what happened? And I said, well, two weeks later, I got fired from my job. <laughs> and I said, well, what have you been doing? And she said, well, I've always wanted to work with my husband. and We, we have a, a, a business together. And now I'm working with my husband. And I said, Sounds like to me you got a promotion. And she this, got this wide-eyed look on her face. She goes, yeah, that's right. For a whole year she'd been mad at me because she didn't understand the application of the word. It's so like, what? We're, we're coming to give impartation, to give confirmation, to, to really uh, call you into something greater. Maybe it's a uh, a gift that God has given you that's lying dormant, and God says, now's the time to activate that gift. Um, I had a word one time for a lady, and I leaned over to the pastor, and I said, it was during worship, and I said, I think I have a word for a lady back on the back row back there. And uh pastor said, well, what, why don't you get up, close off worship, and give the word? And I said, okay. So when I closed off worship, I said, ma'am, I have a, and, you know, you try not to point, but, you know, I was trying to get her attention, and we locked eyes. She saw me, and I said, yes, ma'am, you. And I said, um, here's the word I got for you. Um, the opportunity is from God, and if you'll say yes, he'll bless you in it. And I looked at her, and I said, do you know what that means? And she just slowly shook her head like this, and I said, okay. And so we, we went to the hug time, and the announcements and all. In the service, well, after the service, she comes up to me and she said, what was that? And I said, well, it, it was a word from God uh, indicating that he's with you in the circumstances of your life, and I don't know what it was. Can, you'll have to tell me, what did that mean to you? And she said, oh my gosh. She said, I've been given a promotion, I've been offered a promotion at my work, and I have to let them know Monday whether or not I'm going to take it. And she said, I've been wrestling all weekend trying to figure out, I don't think I can do this. And you said the opportunity is from God, and if I'll say yes, he'll bless me in it. She said, how did you know that? I said, I had no idea. I didn't, I didn't know that. And she said, what? And, and I said, apparently, God, who has seen what you're wrestling with, wants to deliver a message about what you're dealing with, and the promise is, if you'll say yes, he'll bless you in it. She goes, wow. It's, it's, she didn't do this, but it was kind of like, <laughs> and uh, she said, this is the first time I've been to this church. But she said, I'll be back. <laughs> See, when God shows up, when, when we want God 
to be activated. We want him to speak into the reality of circumstances. And it happens in church. It can happen outside of church. It can happen where, wherever you are. In your work, you got a conundrum at the office. God can speak to you. He can, he can give revelation to what has taken place. And here's the third thing. Um, presbytery, presbytery is about connecting with God. So the words that are given draw us into the presence of God and to what God is thinking about. When we say God still speaks today, He is speaking. I think too often what happens, the reason we don't hear Him speak is because we're, we're distracted. Or maybe we, we've heard about it, but we've really ne- never made a commitment of our life to Christ and, and that made Him Lord of our life. And so He sits on the periphery, periphery of our life rather than engaging with us in everyday circumstances because we really don't seek Him. God wants us to know He sees us. He knows us. He knows the circumstances of our life. And He, he is engaging with us and speaking to us. It's the equivalent of, of tuning our antenna into the frequency that God is broadcasting. I, God, I want to hear your voice today. I want to know what you're saying today. And I, I will, if you'll speak to the best of my ability, I will follow you. Every, everybody here, one of the things I love to do uh, when I greet people at, at Gateway is I, I ask them, rather than saying, so are you new? Because there's enough people, I go, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I should know you or not. I had too many of those situations where I said, are you new? And they said, no, I've been here seven years. Oh, man, sorry. So I, I say, hey, tell me your gateway story. Tell me your gateway story. Because everyone, everyone in this room, everyone sitting here has a story of something going on in their life, something that God's doing, some, how, did God, how God brought you here. May, maybe it's a uh, maybe you've been here a long time. God's working in your life. It's about God connecting with us. So here's three things that I just want to want to give as practical guidelines. One, uh, all that we receive from God is consistent with His Word. So we're not looking for extra extra biblical revelation today. It has to be consistent with His character and with His nature. One of the reasons we record everything including words to the candidates. And the, the team here will then, uh, they, they will um, transcribe the word and then they'll review it with each candidate because the reality is when you're in the middle of it, it's like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. And sometimes words that you get, you don't know. I got a word one time, guy, I was, Jan and I were leading a, a college Bible study. The guy came to me and so I think I have a word for you. I, this was before I came into ministry. He said, I think I have a word for you. Can I give it to you? And I said, sure. And he said, I saw the word Phoenix over your life. I believe that God's going to do something. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what, uh, but it has to do with Phoenix. We didn't have a location in Phoenix. I didn't have any friends in Phoenix. I didn't know anything about Phoenix. And I, I had sort of a, maybe a dumbfounded look. And uh, he said, does that make any sense to you? And I said, nope. And he said, well, okay, why don't you just put it on the shelf or, you know, you don't have to just let God speak to you. If it's him, you'll know. It was a full, almost 10 years. We had launched a TV ministry and the consultants that we use to help help us with our TV ministry were based in Phoenix. And I was, I was in Phoenix to meet with our consultants and I was driving down the street. I remember the stoplight where I was at and just like that the Lord said this is the fulfillment of that word today. Ten years later. So you, you may not understand it but when you get it receive it Put it on the shelf if you don't understand it. Get someone who loves you and loves God to help you interpret it. And if they don't understand it, just set it on the shelf. Not infallible in this. Here's the second thing. Uh, Prophecy needs to be judged. So not only, it it needs to be, 
you don't have to, you're not required to do anything to make it happen. It either confirms or it draws something out, it stirs something up. Uh, we're not gonna give you something that you have to say, oh great, now I gotta do this. No, if, it, if God's not already working it, just sit on it and let God uh, bring it about in His time. The third thing is, it, it's not uh, directive. And so, um, when we give a word, we receive the word by faith, and we deliver it by faith. The reality in prophetic ministry is, if you're not willing to be embarrassed, you'll never minister prophetically. Because you don't know. There's no guarantee that what the word that you receive is right, that it'll be understood. You just have to be willing to say, I, this is what I got. I think God is speaking this uh, in your life. It's received by faith. So today, as we deliver these words, uh, there'll be more, there are more people in this room that will actually have words to deliver. And so, can I just tell you, if we deliver a word to somebody, whether it's a candidate or somebody in words in season, and it has a particular application to your life, and you feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit going, hey, 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 pay attention, this is for you. You can receive that word just as if you were called out and given the word, and it's not considered stealing. <laughs> That's the good news. It's, it's what we call a ricochet word. It, you, choo -choo, you know, you, you give it to one person and it ricochets off in the Holy Spirit, and you, you can receive it uh, today. And then, uh, this is a participatory uh, event. And what I mean by that is uh, if you know the people and it's particularly right on, you can, you can talk. We, we do good with feedback. Amen. Praise God. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, claps are in order. In other words, you are activating your faith in response to the words that are being uh, delivered. It's not out of order. Does that make sense? Yeah. So uh, I like to say it this way. We could sell you the whole seat today, but you're only going to need the front part. Just lean in to anticipate what, what God is doing in, in this. Don't sit back and go, yeah, impress me. Show me what you got. That, that's not the, the way prophetic ministry works or even the way God speaks. We, we engage based on our involvement with him. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Pastor Clint.